Hello everybody. Very early in the morning, but I wanted to give you guys a breaking story. So there are two people who are very prominent in the left circles in the United States, Hassan Piker and Vosh, which some of you watching will probably either like them or absolutely hate them. Regardless, they're influential and they got banned from Twitch. Now, apparently the reason why they were banned was because they had used a quote unquote slur, which was the word. Now watch, I'm going to say the word and it's probably going to get me banned. Cracker. They said the word cracker, allegedly, which the, the whole story isn't actually out. It might've been a typo or something along these lines that they had said. Regardless, the full story is not out. We just received notice that they are banned. And you have to wonder, well, hold on a second. If that's all it takes nowadays to get banned, then to what extent do people actually support censorship? For example, you have people, I'm just gonna use the left as an example. You have people on the left who say, well, you can't use specific words because they're derogatory, therefore you need to censor it. And then you have people on the right who say that those individuals are snowflakes, but in reality, they actually support censorship as well. So then there's like some sort of a, a confusing dichotomy there. But regardless, now we have two of the most prominent characters who are banned. I myself actually got shadow banned approximately a year ago on Twitter. So Right overnight, I made fun of, I think it was Ted Cruz and a couple other people. I made a couple jabs, just a couple like little funny, you know, things I just tossed out there. And then from that point onwards, all of my views per every post and the accumulation of views for that month was cut all the way down to 0.8% of all previous views that I'd had. And so I think what's important to know is whether you're on the left or the right, Censorship itself always attacks people who are believed to be on the borderline or borderline content, which isn't always the case because obviously that is subjective. For example, YouTube cut down my views by 70% and sent me an email saying they cut all of my views and recommendations to my channels as a result of the fact that I'm categorized as borderline content because of the fact that I am independent media. So this is something that should be a bipartisan uh, consensus not to support things like this. And I don't really care if people say, well, no, the, the media supports the left. No, they don't. They support the establishment Democrats, which is a completely different story. And then as, if anything, there's a stronger argument that the establishment media supports far right individuals like Donald Trump, for example, maybe not the social media outlets per se, which is what the conversation largely is about. And I'm kind of expanding into something else for the sake of conversation. But if anything, if you're talking about favoritism in the media, it'd be from the far right characters. If you actually look at studies, you could even look at the amount of fake news that was spread across uh, social media, where the average, let me see if I can pull up an actual statistic here. I was just doing a little paper on this. So 40% of Trump supporters read at least one piece of fake news uh, about Trump, like a pro-Trump piece of fake news. In comparison, this is in the 2016 election, in comparison to only 15% of Clinton supporters. And actually, there's an interesting individual named Picker, who's a scholar who studies essentially media and populism, who had found out that fake news media is actually spread more often than real news. And a lot of the creators of the fake news is, go figure, right politicians, and so things like Facebook will promote these individuals inadvertently while they're promoting the messages. So for example, they'll post an ad, they'll spread the ad because the ad creates ad revenue as a result of people looking and it's kind of irregardless on who makes it. Well, the people dominantly making it is either the party or the individual who's categorized as a right populist, in this case, Trump. My whole point, if you're gonna make an argument, those are the people they support more, but even they're getting cracked down on here and there as well. Food for thought.